Um, so um, the, the title of this workshop is uh, virtually written exploring the efficacy of Google tools for promoting collaboration and language competency. Um, so um, it was delivered at our learning centre, which is based in the South Acton estate, and it looked at the applicability of uh, online tools such as Google Hangouts and Google Docs in adult ESO learning. Um, we started with a problem. So as a charity, we are constrained by the funding that we receive. Typically, um, our courses are about 60 guided learning hours. And as teachers, we know that this is not enough for students to make sufficient progress um, in their learning. Um, we, uh, we're already doing quite a lot of work to, uh, to promote uh, learning outside of the classroom. So we obviously, as all teachers, we set homework activities, but we also use um, social networking sites such as uh, Facebook and Google+. Um, the learners have also told us that um, they um, would like to attend more sessions per week and um, in, a, in a survey that we carried out we sort of we learned that um, they only use English for up to 30 minutes a day which is um, uh, not a lot given that they actually live in a they are immersed in this language so um, we decided to create additional opportunities for them to use uh, the language um, um, in sort of a meaningful and motivating way. And we thought that uh, Google applications such as Google Hangouts and Google, um, Google Docs would provide um, such opportunities. Um, the learners were um, all female, um, and they were our learners on our um, ESOL courses. Um, the, the levels range from entry three to about level one, which is pre-intermediate to intermediate. Um, the, oops, the range is averaged um, at about 36 years, and uh, they came from a variety of countries such as India, Algeria, Japan, um, etc. Um, so there's a bit of a mix. Um, so uh, we asked two questions. Um, so we wanted to see whether using Google Hangouts and Google Docs would have an impact and what this impact would be. Um, and we also wanted to see how learners would respond to this type of uh, um, uh, um, provision. Um, to test this, we set up two groups. It was an experimental and a control group. Uh, participation was voluntary. Um, so. Uh, the, uh, both groups received um, a pretest and a post-test. Um, both groups attended their regular ESOL classes, so the only difference between these two groups was that the experimental group also um, attended the, the six online speaking and writing sessions. Um, we started by setting up uh, um, online circles using Google+. I'm not sure if you've used it, but I really like that because Unlike Facebook, when, where when you share something, it goes to everybody, with online circles you can actually target the people that you want to share information with, which is very useful. So if you're running a class, you can have all your students in that circle and sh sharing relevant information with just these students rather than everybody online. Um, so th this is roughly what it looks like. Um, uh, the course... Uh, was six, it was basically six sessions, they were once a week, um, and they were roughly about one hour long, uh, but we were quite flexible with the duration of the sessions, and we, we did allow for the sessions to, to, to run over that one hour if, uh, if uh, there was a need for that. Um, the, the, this session was roughly split into two parts, there was a speaking part where students had an opportunity to discuss the topic, and there was a writing task where they um, sort of started drafting their ideas. Um, there were six topics such as immigration, gender equality, capital punishment, freedom of speech, etc. Um, and we wanted them to be controversial we could, because we wanted to have lively discussions um, which would help learners to generate ideas for their writing. And then we chose discursive essay writing um, to, to allow students to continue these debates, but in writing. Uh, and it also supported sort of um, 
allow them to develop a, a skill of actually presenting their ideas in a balanced and objective way. Um, so uh, the way we scheduled the sessions was by um, sending uh, information to such as workshops uh, such as the um, sorry, worksheets to all students before uh, a few days before the session. We wanted them to familiarize themselves with the vocabulary, with the topic, um, to read any articles that were relevant as well, um, in order to, uh, to then be ready at, at, during the session to, to practice and consolidate the, um, the, the, the new um, Lexis, for example, the new language. Um, and uh, so the, the actual learning was asynchronous in that sense. It took place before the session. So there was no actual teaching during the session. It was all sort of focusing on developing these skills and using these skills, which helped them to consolidate things. Um, and we supported that with, with a Quizlet. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Quizlet. You probably are. It's an application that allows you to create uh, flashcards, which is great for vocabulary learning, for example, because you can just download it on your phone and you test yourself on, on these uh, keywords. Um, and this is roughly what um, it kind of looked like. If you've used Google, you're familiar with this. Um, and this is a typical message that they would receive. Um, so the session, we, we use Google Hangouts. Um, again, Hangouts are very similar to Skype, um, but unlike Skype, uh, it supports more than uh, one to one sort of interaction. Um, so in this example, you can uh, see me with a bunch of students um, having a conversation um, online. Uh, I know that the, the, the paid for version of Skype um, allows more users uh, but the free version and we wanted to both be as cost effective as possible uh, we decided to, to use Hangouts. Um, and we also use Google Docs because um, they allow participants to, uh, uh, to sort of collaborate in real time. Uh, um, we we uh, felt that it was a really nice um, online word editing uh, uh, tool that sort of allowed all participants to, to, uh, to work collaboratively on these uh, um, um, pieces of writing that they were producing. And what was nice was that they could actually um, align these two windows side by side so they could see each other and, and see what they're writing as well. So, so you, they, they could actually have a face-to-face -face interaction with each other. Which was, which was quite interesting. So it wasn't just a case of seeing what the other people were writing, but also talking to them in real time. Um, a, a typical uh, uh, worksheet, the resolution is not great here, um, so I'm sure about this, but it would have the, the, the topic, um, some kind of evocative image, um, key vocabulary, uh, then uh, linking devices as well, links to relevant articles, and then the basic structure of, uh, of the, um, the, the um, essay that they would be writing. Um, so the results were positive. Uh, we, uh, the learners in the experimental group improved um, by 40% on their vocabulary uh, test. The writing improved as well um, in terms of um, Text, text structure and organisation, so the um, texts tended to be uh, better structured uh, with clear indentation. Uh, text cohesion improved as well as, as uh, learners started using um, cohesive devices such as however and moreover. Um, the length of the um, um, text increased from 19 lines on average to, to about 25 lines on average. And, and there was also evidence that participants improved their uh, grammar, um, sentence structure, and punctuation. Um, so the, the second question dealt with their attitudes. And generally, uh, they were positive, but mainly about the discussion uh, stage. They, they really enjoyed the opportunity to discuss these topics with um, one another. Uh, they were less keen on the idea of uh, collaborating in writing. They, they found it quite challenging, especially putting ideas together, ideas of different students into single paragraphs. They found it quite challenging. They felt uneasy about editing other students' texts 
as well, and making suggestions as to the, the, the kind of grammar corrections because they felt that their grammar was not great. Um, and th th there also um, there were also is, uh, issues with regards to social norms uh, where they um, felt constrained by them and that they felt that they would offend uh, the authors of other texts if they made those corrections. Um, so they were quite reluctant to do that. Um, on the whole, however, they, they found the course useful and, and they valued the opportunity to share their ideas with other students. And they, um, they, they enjoyed the flexible nature of the course, which allowed them to attend these sessions from the comfort of their homes. Um, which was very useful because very, uh, a lot of our pa uh, uh, participants, uh, students, are, are mothers who um, have got additional responsibilities as well. Uh, so, uh, to conclude, uh, the study shows the real potential that um, application, an application of online tools such as Google Hangouts and Google Docs can have in adult learning uh, settings. Um, they offer uh, language practice opportunities and collaborations across many different locations um, and in the case of writing across varied uh, periods of times and, and many participants were also involved in that. Um, they can support emerging pedagogical practices in the ESOL classroom and uh, this is quite, quite a, uh, an important point here. They also allow teachers to monitor students' progress um, throughout the writing process and, and to offer constructive feedback as and when required. Um, if I, uh, the next time I run this course I will make the following changes. So I'll, I'll definitely have two sessions per topic. Um, it was felt that uh, uh, because there was only one session per topic, even though students could actually come back and edit the, uh, the text later, uh, the, there was a need for an, a, a sort of a session during which they, we could consolidate these ideas and discuss them and, and fa write final drafts. Um, and also, I would definitely address the, the concerns regarding collaboration because, um, and that could be done quite easily by, uh, by um, asking learners to sort of correct together a generic text rather than a text written by them. So that's all. Thank you very much. problems with you know editing each other's work and those things I, I'd, I'd say that's kind of says less about the efficacy of those tools which yeah. to me seems like a really practical low cost and genius yeah. solution to your problem mm -hmm. yeah um, and it's that really just is more about um, the problem that we have with managing peer le peer assessment yeah. and peer learning per se you know, yeah, I think no, it's important yes. to yeah. distinguish those two though yeah. they're separate issues and I think as a, as a project and a that's the problem solving right. exercise it's Right. Yes. That, that's why we had two questions, and the second question dealt with their attitudes rather than the sort of the um, efficacy of the. Any, any further questions? I just got my head full of things, and I want to go away. Mm -hmm. You have to say. Um, thank Great. you very yeah, much. Absolutely fascinating. Thanks to everybody. Round of applause. Thank you.